The POS system is how you take orders from customers and print order tickets for whoever's making the food. But before we get into it, let's first discuss how you can run without a POS system. If you plan to take only cash, which is quite common in the food truck world, you might forego a POS system altogether and just hand write tickets. There are, of course, both advantages and disadvantages to consider. The advantages are, number one, you save on the upfront cost of purchasing a POS system. Every system varies in price, but you can expect to save close to $1,000 if you just need to buy a cash drawer, ticket paper, and some pens. Number two, by not accepting credit cards, you can save close to 3% per transaction. Number three, this last point is purely for informational purposes, and I do not advocate it at all because it's illegal. If you don't plan on reporting all of your sales, you can save a lot on taxes by taking only cash because the IRS can't trace all of your cash sales. The disadvantages are, number one, it is much harder to keep track of sales unless you or your employees are extremely detailed and keep all tickets neatly organized. This means when you calculate your actual sales, the numbers might be off. Number two, more errors are likely to occur since everything will be handwritten. An employee might misread another employee's handwriting, or an order might be written down so quickly that it's too messy to read. I can't read this sloopy bloopy writing. If you lose a ticket, you won't be able to reprint it. Number three, more cash means a higher risk of employee theft. Number four, although you don't have to pay any credit card transaction fees, some customers who didn't have cash may not buy anything from the truck, especially if other trucks on the same street do take credit cards. Also, people tend to spend more money when they use credit cards versus when they use cash. We've used the POS system from our very first day, mostly because we thought customers would appreciate the convenience of paying by card, and a lot of people in Manhattan actually don't carry much cash on them. Our current breakdown is around 80% credit card and 20% cash. Anyway, back to POS systems. The typical POS setup for a food truck is an encased tablet, like an iPad, a ticket or receipt printer, and a cash drawer. Some trucks opt to use their smartphones or a handheld device instead of a tablet. You can use the personal hotspot on your phone, or you can get a dedicated hotspot device from any major phone carrier. We use a hotspot device because the data connection on our phones sometimes isn't very good. Hardware, software, features, and pricing are all different, so it really comes down to personal preference. We chose Square simply because it was the biggest POS company at the time, and aside from some minor inconveniences, which I'll explain later, we've been pretty happy overall. I'll break it down into three main factors. Software, hardware, and pricing. Since all of these companies constantly update their software and features, it wouldn't make sense to list all of them here because something might change tomorrow. Instead, I'll explain which basic software features you should be looking for. Number one, UI or user interface. In other words, how easy and intuitive is the system to use? And then you click sign in. What number was that? I don't know how to do that. This is like a nuclear launch code. <laughs> Why does this have to go through the Pentagon? I will try to use this system, but I just took money out of your ATM. The best way to tell is by doing a live demo. Some POS companies will send a local rep to meet you in person, while others will do a demo with you online. The UI should be easy enough for any adult who has never used a POS system to be able to learn it in five minutes or less. The UI should also minimize the number of clicks or taps you have to perform for specific functions. For example, if I added two burgers to the order instead of one, do I need to press one thing or four different things to fix the mistake? Number two, reporting. The POS should include daily, weekly, and monthly, and yearly sales reports for free. Some reports may even break it down by the hour. Reports should show the total number of sales, the total dollar amount, tax, tips, and the breakdown by item. You should also be able to export the reports to Excel, QuickBooks, or any other popular accounting software format. Otherwise, your accountant may charge you more to extract all that data manually. Number three, editing. You should be able to edit your menu quickly and without having to contact the POS company. See how many steps it takes to edit a menu item's name, price, etc. Number four, customer information. When a customer places an order, do you input their name or are they given an order number? Number five, order tickets. See what a printed order ticket looks like. Is the font too small? Can you change the font size or style? Does the ticket contain all the information you want? Can you add or remove information? Number six, receipts. How easy is it to print a customer receipt? Can you email the receipt? What information is displayed on the receipt? Can you change what's displayed? Number seven, tips. Does it allow you to set specific tip amounts? Can the customer enter their own tip amount? The following software features are helpful, but optional in my opinion, so I put them in a separate list. Number eight, invoicing. If you plan to do occasional catering events or other types of private events, it would be helpful to have an invoicing feature so that whoever is hiring you can pay you directly through the POS system with a credit card or direct deposit. Also, it allows them to send the invoice and receipt with your company's information already attached. Without this feature, you would basically have to accept only cash and you'll have to write your own invoices and receipts which may not look very professional. Number nine, I got, I got, I got loyalty. is there a loyalty program? How much does it cost? How easy is it for the customer to sign up? What rewards can you set up? 
How easy is it to contact customers to update them about their loyalty status? Can you send targeted emails and messages to loyalty members? In my opinion, loyalty or rewards programs are better suited for brick and mortar restaurants that are well established in the area of business. Customers who visit a food truck usually just want a quick meal and won't really have the patience to enter their personal information to sign up for the program. Here you go. And if you'd like to put your email on our sign up list, I'd be happy to sell it to Russian hackers. It doesn't hurt to use one if it's included with your POS software, but I wouldn't really pay extra every month for it. Number 10, discounts. Can you give discounts on specific items just for one day? Can it be on a weekly basis, like Taco Tuesdays? Are the discount amounts preset, or can you manually enter the amounts? Is there a way to prevent employees from abusing the discount system? Can you keep track of which employee gave which discounts? Can discounts stack? If you want to do a promotion maybe once or twice a year, like a one-year anniversary promotion or a customer appreciation day, that's fine. But I'm not a big fan of regular promotions, especially for food trucks. Food trucks are already seen as kind of cheaper than restaurants, both in price and in quality. So adding a discount, I feel, degrades that image even more. Number 11, employee clock-in system. Does it have one? Is it easy to add or remove employees? Can the hours be tampered with? What happens if an employee forgets to clock in or clock out? What does reporting for employee hours look like? Can it be exported to QuickBooks or other accounting software formats? There are tons of free time tracking apps you can install on your tablet if your POS allows you to install third-party apps. So I wouldn't really pay extra for this feature. Number 12, online ordering integration. If you plan to do online deliveries, having third-party integration is a definite plus. See if there are any limitations, any additional costs, what the order tickets look like, how to set up your company's page or profile, and how to notify the delivery company or customer if there's a problem. We personally don't do online ordering or ordering ahead on our food truck simply because we're already slammed with customers during our normal service. They see me rolling, they hate it. Adding online ordering would just make things too hectic. I would hold off on this feature until you're at least a few months in. Now onto the hardware. Aside from looks, your hardware decision should come down to only a few factors. Number one, price. Generally, the prices for tablet-based POS systems are similar because you need to provide the tablet and then purchase all the other peripherals from the POS company. You can expect to pay around $1,000 for the tablet, the stand, a cash jar, a printer, and a credit card reader. On the other hand, POS systems that use their own fully integrated tablet can be quite expensive but these are generally reserved for restaurants. Most companies have financing or lease options if you're tight on cash. Number two, compatibility and availability. It's good to have a POS system that is compatible with more than one model of each peripheral, like your printer or cash or whatever. If your printer breaks, for example, but your POS system can only be used with that specific printer, you'll most likely have to order it directly from the company and it may take days or weeks for it to arrive. A few weeks? Come on, you know I'm terrible at waiting for things. We'll be right back with more Laverne and Shirley. But I want it now! If there are multiple printers that can be used, you're more likely to find one in stock that can be shipped quickly, or you may find one at a local hardware or electronic store and not have to wait at all to replace it. Number three, printer. It's been my experience that a Bluetooth printer is worth the extra cost compared to a wired one. We've gone through three printers, and one of the most common points of failure for us was the actual physical wire connection. A minor benefit is there is one less wire to get tangled, and it's slightly easier to move from one side of the truck to the other, because on our food truck, we serve out of both sides. Number four, reliability. The best place to check is online. Read forums and general posts about specific hardware components that die quickly or malfunction often. For us, the USB hub that connects our square stand to the card reader and printer dies every few months. And if you read the forums on Square's own website, you'll see that it's a very common problem. We've gone through at least five USB hubs so far and always keep a new backup in case our current one dies. Number five, warranty. All hardware should come with at least one year of warranty, but read the fine print to see what the policy is. Some companies require to ship the broken unit first before they send you a replacement. Some may cover only specific types of damages or errors. We purchased all of our Square hardware directly from their website, except for the iPad, which we bought from Best Buy. Okay, Wi-Fi plus 3G, 64 gig, this one, this one! Eric, we can't afford that one. Well, you don't expect me to get the Wi-Fi only 16 gig version, do you? I think we need to get you a different brand, hon. They're a little cheaper. Mom, everyone knows that everything but Apple is stupid! It came out to just over $1,000 for everything. The convenient thing about Square hardware is that you can buy the Square stand at a lot of Best Buy locations. So if your unit suddenly breaks down, you can go pick one up instead of having to wait for it to arrive in the mail. Finally, let's talk about pricing. Pricing for POS systems involves the initial hardware and the installation costs, possible monthly fees for the actual software, and any add-on services and processing fees. Hardware costs are generally listed on each POS company's website. Some POS companies will charge you a monthly fee just for using their software, 
whether you make a sale or not. There are also some optional features for monthly costs like gift cards and real-time inventory management, but they probably won't apply to most new food trucks. Processing fees are what you pay for each debit card or credit card swipe. For those of you who hate numbers, here's a summary of the next few minutes. For new food trucks, it's almost impossible to go wrong with a flat rate model which means you pay the same amount for any type of card you swipe. So if the POS system you like offers a flat rate system, you'll be fine. If you're interested in the details of all the fees, please continue watching. If not, feel free to skip to the next chapter. Here we go, <laughs> buckle up and go to me and Buffy one. Every POS company charges a processing fee for any card related purchase, whether it's credit, debit, mobile. This includes the fees paid to the credit card companies and a cut for the POS company. Cash purchases are in charge to fee, which is why many small businesses set minimum amounts for purchases using credit cards or just don't accept cards at all. There are three main types of processing models. Number one is the flat rate model. In the flat rate model, you pay the same percentage or percentage plus a flat fee for every card related transaction. For example, as of 2020, Square charges 2.6% plus 10 cents per card related transaction. So if your customer orders a meal for $10, you would pay Square 26 cents plus 10 cents, which is a total of 36 cents. This is good for businesses whose average ticket is on the low end, which means less than $20. They generally pay the least under this model. It's also good if most of your customers use high-end credit cards that have high annual fees, like American Express Platinum or Chase Sapphire Reserve. It is an American Express Platinum card. It has no spending limit. You also don't need to deal with long statements each month that list all the cards that you processed and what you paid for each one. You'll pay more under this model if most of your customers pay with debit cards or use lower end credit cards that typically have no annual fees or rewards earning features. Another downside is that unless you keep track of every card that you swipe, you won't know if you can get a cheaper rate with one of the other processing plans. Number two. Interchange Plus. This model may require to do some shopping around because you'll have to pick a POS system and a separate company for credit card processing. Interchange, or wholesale fees, refer to all the fees you have to pay the credit card companies and their banks. Under this model, every type of credit card is placed into a specific category depending on its rewards program. So for example, higher end cards are charged higher rates. And what type of business the card was used at. So the fee would be lower if the card was used at a supermarket versus at a restaurant. This fee is non-negotiable because they're set by Visa, MasterCard, Amex, and Discover. You can find the complete list of interchange fees for Visa and MasterCard in the resources section, or you can do a quick Google search. Amex and Discover don't publicly release their interchange fee information. I don't know why. The plus in Interchange Plus refers to the extra markup you pay to the credit card processing company. This fee is also called the discount fee. The fee is typically a small percentage plus a flat amount, like 0.3% plus five cents. So if you charge a $10 meal to a Visa debit card, you'd pay the interchange fee of 1.19% plus 10 cents, which is 22 cents, plus the markup of 0.03% plus five cents, which is eight cents for a total of 30 cents. This is good because you can see exactly how much you pay for every card you process. If your average ticket size is pretty high, like over $20, you'll probably pay less than under the flat rate model. If you process lots of debit cards, you'll also save a lot of money as well because the fees for debit cards are much lower than those for credit cards. Unfortunately, most food trucks will have low average ticket sales, so you'll probably pay more than you would under the flat rate model unless more than half your customers pay with debit cards or lower end credit cards. Also, you'll come across terms like regulated and unregulated or exempt interchange fees for debit cards. Regulated means the card was issued by a bank with over $10 billion in assets, and unregulated or exempt is if the bank has less than 10 billion. So in the last example, I showed you how much you'd pay if a customer used an unregulated or exempt debit card. But if a customer were to use a regulated debit card, the interchange fee would be 0.05% plus 22 cents. On a $10 meal, this comes out to 23 cents. We'll keep the markup of 0.03% plus five cents the same for both cards, which works out to eight cents. This brings our total fees to 31 cents for the regulated debit card and 30 cents for the unregulated or exempt debit card. Furthermore, many popular POS companies don't allow you to choose your own card processor because the POS companies want everything done in-house. Finally, you'll get a monthly statement outlining all of the interchange fees. 
but be prepared to sift through a lot of numbers and categories. I've included a sample guide on how to read an interchange plus statement in the resources section. Number three, tiered or bundled. All card transactions are grouped into three tiers. Every company has different criteria and rates for each tier, so the following is just an example of what you might see. First tier is qualified. Debit card or non-rewards credit cards has the lowest rate, which is 1.5% plus 5 cents. Second is mid-qualified, which are rewards credit cards, and they have the middle rate of 2% plus 10 cents. And finally, the third one, non-qualified, which are corporate or business cards or international credit cards. They have the highest rate at 2.5% plus 15 cents. The good thing about the system is the monthly statements are much simpler to read than with the Interchange Plus model. If most of your cards fall under the Qualified tier, you may save more money than with the Flat Fee or Interchange Plus. The bad part is if you do a quick search online about the tiered model, 9 out of 10 sites will tell you to stay away. This is because most of your card transactions will not actually fall under the Qualified tier. And since the processor won't show you every card transaction, they can basically downgrade certain transactions to lower tiers to charge you more money and you'll have no idea which ones this happened to. Also, since every card processor has their own set of criteria for which cards qualify for which tier, it's kind of impossible to figure out who offers the best rates. You may also read about the subscription processing fee arrangement, but this is good only for businesses that have very large transactions. It would never apply to food trucks. There's also something called ERR, which stands for Enhanced Rate Recovery which should be avoided like the tiered and bundled model because it is not transparent with its actual charges. The processor may advertise a low processing rate, but then hit you up with surcharges, hidden fees, and so on. I would stick with the flat rate model until your operation is pretty steady and you have at least a few months of processing data to use as a point of comparison with other processing models. Once you achieve some really big sales numbers, like over $500,000 annually, or your average ticket size goes over $20, I would try to negotiate a lower rate with your processor or POS company. I'd probably call your own POS company and their competitors once every six months to a year. I mean, it doesn't hurt. So as I mentioned, a POS system is not mandatory. It's completely optional, but if you choose to get one, expect to spend around $1,000. Please also keep in mind, it can be financed. So this brings our total on the low end to 16,475 and on the high end to 48,725.